the Student Affairs Office. And I have the pleasure of just really welcoming you uh, this evening and just to share a little bit about um, our lavender ceremony. And um, we're gonna get a little bit of the history a little later, but at Wydu University, this is really only the second um, lavender ceremony that we have held. We, our first one was held in 2019, and then guess what happened for two years? So, um, and so I'm really pleased that we're able to pick up where we left off. I'm also pleased um, that um, in January of 2022 uh, of this year, um, I was able to, um, to bring Sage uh, Milo here um, to the campus. And Sage Milo is our um, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, program manager. And um, Sage has been an awesome addition to the Multicultural Student Affairs Office and the CDO office. So I'm really pleased um, now to introduce um, Sage to you because Sage is going to be facilitating and has planned this program um, for you this evening. So thank you and you're on. Thank you. Hi, um, so Mickey already introduced me. I don't need to introduce myself. Welcome everyone to um, our second ever, and as Mickey said, first since the pandemic lavender pre-commencement ceremony, um, which is hosted by the Multicultural Student Affairs Office. Um, like Mickey said, I'm Sage Milo. I use they, them pronouns. I am the DI program manager in the MSA office. I'm also super nervous and super excited. Um, I'll just be honest about it. So this lavender ceremony celebrates the achievements and contributions of our LGBTQIA graduating students, both graduate and undergraduate, um, to the wider community. And it's, it's really an opportunity to formally recognize and highlight the accomplishments of our LGBTQIA plus students of all races and ethnicities, and to do so with some of the people who have supported you on this journey. Um, it's also part of the process of us growing our infrastructure to support the success of our LGBTQIA plus students, current and future. Um, the association of lavender as a color with the LGBTQIA plus community dates back to the 19th century. And it was often used as a label for the perceived threat posed by LGBTQIA plus people. Um, and perhaps, perhaps the best known instances of this are the Lavender Scares, Scare in the 1950s, and Betty Friedan referring to lesbians in the feminist movement as a lavender menace. Um, but the color was also taken up by LGBTQIA plus people as one that symbolizes resistance, perseverance, and the diversity within LGBTQIA plus communities. Um, and now I, I would have loved to close my remarks here and just tell you that the ceremony is evidence of how far we've come and to just let you go get some food, which I will do in a couple minutes. Um, but the reality that has been made even clearer to us in the past couple of days is, is that progress is really far from, from being linear. Um, and advances are met with backlash. And even if some laws and policies have changed, the beliefs and values that created them in the first place in a lot of cases did not. Um, the waves of legislation against LGBTQIA plus people, the recent attacks on reproductive rights, and the discourse around these and other issues are another lavender scare of sorts. Um, this time around, it's not gay and lesbian government employees who are the main targets, but trans people, uh, mostly trans women of color and trans youth. I'm not saying all this to discourage and depress you, despite how it might seem but more to link you to what came before. Um, you being here, your success is an achievement and an act of resistance in itself. Many of you will continue. I got a little spoiler to your future plans through the, the form. So I know that many of you will continue working directly with and for um, the LGBTQIA plus community. And for all of you, regardless of field, your existence and thriving in the different fields that you're going into will make a difference. And it already does. Um, we will have some more remarks in a bit from Erica Smith, who's here, and I will introduce her a little bit more later. Um, and members of the LGBTQIA advisory group will give you your stoles, which are right here. But for now, please get some food and let us all celebrate you. Thank you. So, speaker tonight, Erica is an award winning sexuality educator who received her master's of education from Widener Center for Human Sexuality Studies in 2007. Um, she works at the CHOP Gender Clinic for trans youth, and she specializes in purity, culture, recovery, LGBTQ plus health, adolescent sexuality and sexual health, and sexual health needs of justice involved youth, and sex education for children, among other things. So Erica, thank you for being here.
everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's been a while since I've been on the Widener campus, so thank you very much for um, inviting me to this event. Um, and thank you, Sage, especially, because I wouldn't have known about this. <laughs> so my name is Erica Smith. My pronouns are she, her. And I am truly, truly honored to be speaking at your Lavender graduation ceremony today. I will admit that it feels like a very wild time to deliver an inspiring talk um, to young LGBTQ people in the United States right now. Thank you. <laughs> um, to be delivering an inspiring talk to young LGBT people who are about to leave college and go out in this particular world at this particular time. And there's really no way to ignore or sugarcoat that. When I was first asked to speak by Sage, I knew for sure that I wanted to talk about resistance and all that we as a community are currently facing in terms of the anti-gay and anti-trans and anti-sex education legislation sweeping this country, a lot of which Sage already referenced. Um, a lot of those things directly impact the work I do every day, but they also impact all of our lived experiences. And then of course, little did I know that while I was working on this speech and already stressing about that, we would get the Supreme Court brief leak um, <laughs> that would affect my plans for basically all, everything this week, um, including this speech. So I spent quite a bit of time asking my friends and even my therapist, how will I inspire? <laughs> what can I say to possibly inspire like young LGBTQ graduates at this time? And I have not given a graduation speech since my own high school graduation. So I Googled. I Googled <laughs> how to write a commencement speech. Library <laughs> approved. And I will tell you that when I gave my high school commencement speech, Google didn't even exist. So this is a, it's a new frontier and it, it was helpful. Um, there's a lot of conventional advice on how to give a good commen commencement speech. And Here's what one blogger said in particular. This is how you speak to graduates. You have accepted a responsibility to offer all the inspiration, hope, information, humor, idealism, common sense, and advice you can summon. Like, no that's pressure. no pressure, right? <laughs> <laughs> so much pressure. Um, but interestingly enough, more than once, I also stumbled upon the advice to not be political in a commencement speech. Um, clearly, none of these folks were talking about lavender graduation ceremonies because we are here at this particular event because our identities and our lives are politicized. So a little bit, I, I, you might be planning to do some history of the lavender graduation, but I build a little of that into this talk too. So um, I, I am done. It's all oh, cool. All right. Um, <laughs> so lavender graduations were born out of necessity. They're, they're rich history started at the University of Michigan in 1995. There was a Jewish lesbian professor named Dr. Ronnie Samlo, and she was not allowed to watch her own children graduate college because she was a lesbian, which, right, that face is what all of us are thinking. <laughs> like, and, and it sounds really retro, but then again, I remember that there are some folks that would like to put us back in that space. So it's not exactly unrelated to how things are happening right now. Um, so after this happened to her, she realized that there were also no recognition ceremonies specifically for LGBTQ students to honor their lives and achievements. And she held the first lavender graduation. Um, by 2001, which is the year I graduated undergrad, there were 45 of them across the country. Um, but this is my very first one. So I'm honored to be here and have this happening at this particular um, very crucial moment in history. So since I'm talking specifically to LGBTQ graduates, I wanted to talk about the concept of queer temporality or queer time. So this is something that emerged out of queer theory. Um, someone wrote, Jack Halberstam is the author, um, wrote an essay called Queer Temporality and Postmodern Geographies in a 2005 anthology called In a Queer Time and Place, Transgender Bodies, Subcultural Lives. And this is what Jack wrote. 
queer uses of now this is theory heavy so just give me a just a minute the paragraph will be over soon i'm not a theory person either i promise you <laughs> so here here it is queer uses of time and space develop at least in part in opposition to the institutions of family heterosexuality and reproduction if we try to think about queerness as an outcome of strange temporalities imaginative life schedules and eccentric economic practices we detach queerness from sexual identity and come closer to understanding Foucault's comment that homosexuality threatens people as a way of life rather than as a way of having sex. In Foucault's radical formulation, queer friendships, queer networks mark out the particularity and the perceived menace of homosexual life. And he continues writing, obviously not all gay, lesbian, and transgender people live their lives in radically different ways from their heterosexual counterparts. But part of what has made queerness compelling as a self descriptor has to do with the way it has the potential to open up new life narratives. So to me, I think being an LGBTQ person is a defining aspect of our lives. It is much more than who we desire and much more than who we wanna partner with to me. I consider it a way of approaching the world. And queer time allows us to believe that our futures can be imagined outside of these like traditional markers of heterosexual society. And I find this very comforting. Um, to me, it says that we don't have to take the same paths and make the same life choices as cisgender hetero people in systems around us unless we want to. Um, many of those choices are now available to us, it is true, but we don't have to, we don't have to take the same paths. Um, there's a rich history of LGBTQ people not taking typical life paths. And I want you to remember as um, young graduates that typical life milestones, they look real scary ahead of you and you don't have to force yourself to achieve ones that don't appeal to you at all. Like if they don't feel like they're for you, that's okay. They don't have to be for you. Um, and you don't need to pressure yourself to make them be for you. Another thing that I wish someone would have told me <laughs> is that you don't have to participate in hustle culture. Um, a lot of graduation speeches are steeped in hustle culture, and that's the idea that we must always be working so hard, um, always trying to achieve more, be pushing for more, and creating more so that we can be the best. And after all, it's a very American way of thinking. Um, we've all been raised to internalize the idea that if we aren't exhausted and burn out at the end of the day then we didn't do enough um, and that we can't play or rest until we've done things and we are fed the narrative that that's how we get value as people um, this message is pushed really hard to young people and people just going out into the working world for the first time because the assumption is you don't have kids um, you're probably you know the assumption is you're in great health and you have all the time and energy in the world so you should be working those like 60 hour weeks 75 hour weeks. Um, I'm sure many of you are very amped up and raring to go, but I, I mean it's an exciting time it's exciting to graduate college and there is a lot to be done. And I want you to get out there and go, but also remember that you do not have to grind yourself down like that um, there are so many other things in life that deserve your attention like community friends love family and rest and those are all really really important um they make your life rich and worth living not the work and so don't neglect those areas of your life there's a really fantastic instagram account called the nap ministry if you don't follow it it is a you follow it <laughs> it is a it is a very um they teach you, it's a group of black women who are very committed to teaching the idea that rest is a radical tool for healing and resistance. And I, I'm sad that I didn't know that until I was in my forties. Um, and another incredibly valuable thing that I have learned that I wanna pass on is wisdom from my best friend's late father. His name was William Oglesby and he was a beloved teacher at Girls High in Philly. And he gave this advice over and over, which was, don't ever take yourself out of the running for something before someone else can do that for you. So if you're thinking of applying for a job or taking a shot at something else, don't say no to yourself before somebody else even has the chance to. So apply for the things that seem like a long shot, um, have some audacity, 
especially if you are a person that is not, you know, the if, if you're someone who has a marginalized identity, you've got to go for it. Um, and honestly, for me, the older I get, the more I lean into learning about and honoring the wisdom of the people that came before us. And I love that, Sid, you talked about that in your intro. So we're like really on theme here without meaning to be. Um, and learning from the battles that they fought. So I think that as younger LGBTQ people, it is our responsibility to do this. If you don't know any LGBTQ elders, find some and learn from their lives and experiences. Listen to their stories. If you don't know where to start, um, learn about Marsha P. Johnson, Sylvia Rivera, ACT UP, um, the Gay Men's Health Crisis, Barbara Giddings, who was a Philadelphia activist. There are so many people that we can learn about, um, learn from them about resistance and community. And I think it's important that we do because we have a fight ahead of us as well. And I want to dedicate this entire speech to my great uncle. His name was Ed Bell, but he was known to me as my Uncle Butch. He was born in the late 1930s, and he was an out and proud gay man his entire life, until he passed last year when he was in his 80s. So as you can imagine, as a gay man who came of age in the 1950s, his story was marked with struggle. I know he experienced rejection, heartbreak, homophobic discrimination from big systems and from individuals alike. But he also had a life that was really full of love and joy and family and community until the very end. And he was so proud of being gay. He was the gayest, proudest, outest man at the senior living facility <laughs> his whole <laughs> life. <laughs> um, and he wanted you to know it too. And in our phone calls, we would often talk about how different things are now and in ways that he could never have imagined as a young gay man. So I know historically the experience of being an LGBTQ person has included struggle, but it has also involved resistance, community, family, and immense joy. So if you're Gen Z, if that's how you identify, because I think, you know, we're all calling each other generational names now. <laughs> um, you are the future that our LGBTQ elders dreamed about. They fought for you to have this moment. Go and live your proud LGBTQ lives for my Uncle Butch and for all of our elders. We have the opportunity to do things that they never, ever dreamt of and to make life choices that were not available to them. And despite the current LGBTQ pushback, we will not go back in the closets that they busted out of. And despite the, um, oh wait, I just said that, sorry. <laughs> no matter what degree you have earned or what career or life path you're on, honor your truth and stand proudly in your authenticity. There's a rich history and tradition behind you and we cannot wait to see what you do. Thank you. <laughs>